Good day, everybody. I hope you're having a wonderful Friday and that your week has finished off quite well, even if you're working over the weekend. Um, I hate e-begging. I've said this more than one occasion over the years. Over the month, sorry. And I just woke up today to YouTube absolutely hammering my um, ad revenue, which is not to be... You know, not expected, but it just is an, a really annoying thing. So if you like what I do, please subscribe to the channel. We are 25 uh, uh, subscriptions away from reaching 8, 8k sub subs. I would love to do it by the end of the weekend. On top of that, if you like what I do, patrons down below. You know, become a member of the channel, all that fun stuff. It really helps me out. I, I love you all long time, and I'm going to be doing another video on Sunday to be released on Monday discussing where the channel's going, what we're going to be doing going forwards. But uh, lots of cool stuff. I don't want to stop doing this, and I never will stop doing this. I'd, I'd, I'll just have to start doing it less often if I don't... Do you know what I mean? Like, it is what it is. I'm a teacher. I'm very busy. So, yeah, I'm, uh, I'm taking the, uh, time away from my day when I get home to do these things. So I am trying to make sure that it's profitable and I'm doing something about it. But YouTube is not making it. Uh, very easy. That is not your problem, though. If you don't want to give anything, don't worry. I'm never going to go away. I'm always going to be here. You know, I just may not be here every single day. You know, I may have to take on more uh, marking work, things like that, to, to make it to make uh, the difference up. But anyway, I have two very, very, very interesting sections of, of stories here today. One kind of bleeds into the other. And that's why I picked them, because I think they went really well together. And I hope you enjoy Let's have a little look at some Hobby Nightmares, shall we? So the first one is a few stories by Kiwi. And Kiwi has been on the channel a few times in the past, giving us uh, some stories about his love life and other, other things. Uh, very, very brave of him to come out and ask for advice in a public forum. And he also wants to talk about a young lady called Red, who has been somebody who's been some of his stories before. Red is a very bad winner, ladies and gentlemen. Red doesn't, uh, does not know how to win. Or how to play war games as things go. But anyway, let's talk about Red, shall we? So Kiwi says, Hi North, back again with some stories on Red. Thank you very much. <clears throat> now he separated these into three war gaming stories where she played three different war games. Let's get into them. The Lord of the Rings story. This one is a fairly short story, so I'll start with this one first. From time to time, the local game store I used to go to whilst I was in university was organising dem demonstration games on various war games such as Bolt Action, Star Wars Legions, 40k, Age of Sigmar, Lord of the Rings, Infinity, and so on. I, for one, tried as many systems as, as I could that evening to get a taste of the war game and to see if I would enjoy uh, playing it later on. Red started that evening painting some minis, but eventually decided to orbit around the demo tables, and after commenting on some paint jobs, she decided to settle down and play some Lord of the Rings. If I remember correctly, I think it was Rohan vs. Mordor. I was at the next table, playing bolt action, but, were, who, but we got distracted constantly by Red at the Lord of the Rings table, who was asking a lot of questions that were not important for the demo game, and when she got bad rolls or beaten, she would cuss and blame the dice. After she was done with the demo, she thanked the guy but told him the game seemed way too boring for her. After she left, I saw the dude's look of absolute relief on her face. Oh my god. Yeah. <clears throat> uh, happens. Happened to me before in Games Workshop as well when you're trying to give somebody a demo game and they're taking it way too seriously. I once had, had one guy slam his fist down on the intro table. And I spend a lot of time working on these intro tables. And, uh, yeah, that was not great. I was just like, um... Excuse me? <laughs> you know? Uh, please don't do that on my frozen lake. Anyway, the Star Wars Legion story slash stories. I have been a Star Wars fan since I was like five years old. That's when I saw The Empire Strikes Back on TV. And I have been collecting action figures and scale models from a very young age. Scale models? Are these like life-size? Never mind. When I heard that Star Wars had a war game, I jumped immediately on a starter set of Rebels vs. Empire. I painted them as best I could, and I'm very proud of my scout troopers. They are the jungle sports camo guys and netting from Hoth. No, it's not Hoth, is it? You say Hoth. It's not Hoth, it's uh, the other one. I don't care. And um, Death Troopers. Red was also a sort of a Star Wars fan, and wanted to join me in playing. Excellent. I obliged her request and played two games with her. 
I had to explain the rules and build the armies, hand-holding her throughout the two games. She eventually decided that she wanted to play against someone else, borrowed my rebels, and asked another uh, 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 Empire player to play her. She was cocky and very confident in her list-building skills, game knowledge, and tactics. She shouldn't have been. In short, she got absolutely bodied by the Empire player, and I mean no mercy was shown by the Imperial player. He didn't power game her, he just outmaneuvered her and used superior tactics in flanking and overcoming her positions. Red started the game strong with a bit of board control and taking out a couple of stormtroopers here and there, but started to lose horribly after the Imperial scout speeders started outflanking her and the stormtroopers getting into covered cover proved to be excellent marksmen as well. Yeah, I've heard this about Empire players in the in the Star Wars game, in Legions. Like, I've heard that they are, like, merciless. That they don't care whether you're 5 years old or 90 years old. They're ripping you a new one. And I just think that's wonderful. <laughs> it's because they're just, like, Empire players. They're all talking. It's like, yes, kill them. Kill them all. Uh, <clears throat> Red was getting visibly upset and angry. And by the last turn, she was literally red with rage. It was clear the game was lost and the Imperial player wanted to call it, uh, since there was nothing Red could do anymore at that point. She resentfully said something like, fine, whatever, GG. She left the table and wandered off somewhere to continue her brooding. The dude looked at me with a WTF look on his face. I shook his hand and thanked him for, the, for coming to play and that I'll play him one day too. Needless to say, that, that Red never touched Star Wars Legions ever again. <clears throat> yeah, this is somebody whose self-worth is really tied up in whether they're winning war games or not. And that's kind of sad. Um, not sad in a, oh, look, this person, ha-ha, kind of a way. I'm being honest. Like, like this, that's kind of sad. You know what I mean? Like, that, that nobody, nobody should have their self-worth defined by a war game. But anyway, something else must be going on in her life. But anyway, the bolt action story. Um, this one also a rather short story is a rather short story as well, but is amongst my last wargaming interactions with Red. I also like history quite a lot, don't we all? And after playing a couple of bolt action games, demo games, mind you, with borrowed armies, I decided to buy the starter set for myself. After it arrived and I assembled the minis and read the rules, I talked about the local games. I talked around the local game store about the game and how exciting it was for me. Red wanted to try it out as well. And asked, a couple, and asked for a couple of demo games. I agreed and borrowed her a cheat sheet and the rule book to study for the, for the next week or so. Uh, and we could play it on the weekend. Yeah, I'm going to say that she didn't read it at all. She wanted to play the Germans, surprise, surprise. And I ended up playing with US paratroopers. The, day, the game day arrived. She did skim over the rules, but not enough to actually remember them or understand them. And I made the army list again. This time with a bit of her input... Uh, on how she wanted her grenades to be equipped with. Okay, I was going to come out there and say, right, is Red hot? Because you're putting a lot of effort into teaching this person war games, when I'm I'm pretty sure if this was a dude, you would have walked away like like three or four stories ago. You would literally have been like, okay, I'm done with this guy. You know? <clears throat> we don't get this, this many chances. So I'm, I'm wondering how hot Red is. Let's, let's carry on, shall we? I also gave her a quick rundown on what her army excels at and what my army excels at. We rolled for a mission. Don't particularly remember which one it was. In theory, she should have steamrolled me. Um, but she did not. For, for the simple fact that she didn't know how to think tactically and decided to let her guys be sitting ducks. She lost the first game and wanted a rematch. Not much change in her tactics. My paratroopers managing to, to flank her infantry. And my air force spotter taking out both of her half-tracks in one turn. She was salty but refrained from throwing a hissy fit and resorted to saying, I can't wait to fix your, your model paint jobs on these. I used to ask her to help me out with smaller details like faces and things that she had much better finesse for. Red did not pick up bulk bot action either and these games were pretty much my last hobby interaction with her. We grew apart after uni. Yeah, no shit. Uh, I assume that you uh, came to your senses and realised that this woman was, was not going to be the mother of your kids, and, and moved on. I know that sounds horrible, but, you know. Like, guys do not get that many chances. That is like six stories we've had about Red now, where she does the same thing over and over and over again, and keeps getting another chance. But anyway, uh, another one of my favourite stories that I've read over the past couple of weeks is by somebody called The Norman. 
and his name's actually Norman, rather than being just a Norman from Normandy. Anyway, French descended from Vikings. What's all that about? Anyway, Norman says, I'm going to have a little cough before I do this. I'm going to switch my cough for just a second. That's better. Norman says, hey, Exile. Hello, Norman. I just wanted to go into a D&D &D story, as I don't think you've had one in quite a while. This was part of a campaign involving ancient history, so it, will be, it should be right up your alley. Indeed it is. So we are all history ar anoraks and armchair generals in our D&D group. After playing in the Forgotten Realms, the D&D &D setting, we were all ready to take the plunge and get into some heavy historical gaming. We used the free Classical Rome and Greece mo module crossover for Dungeons & Dragons 5th edition, and proceeded to roll characters for this epic low fantasy, high history take on ancient Rome. When I say high history, we stick to realistic themes of the Roman Empire, and so it can tend to get, and should get, pretty grim from time to time. In our hobby group, we have Norman, me, a Roman centurion, in his late 30s, who, was t who, has taken his pen who had taken his pension and then lost it in a legal dispute, hence me being a merc now. I love that. That's a really, really realistic character uh, motivation for a Roman centurion. Yeah, you get paid out by the legions and then you lose it gambling or something. That's really funny. Uh, Steve, a Sagittarius, which is basically a, a Roman scout, if, if, you, if you guys don't know, in the Roman legions, a Sagittarius is a Roman scout. A Sagittarius of the Roman legions kicked out for stabbing his commanding officer. He avoided crucifixion because his father is a low-ranking senator. Still, it was the choice of be kicked out of the legion or be killed, and he chose the former. Uh, Robin, uh, one second. There we go. Uh, Robin, a gladiator woman, uh, without work since her training school in Massalia, modern-day Marseille, was burned down by a revolt she wanted nothing to do with. She loved being a gladiator, and doesn't really see anything wrong with slavery, so long as slaves are treated well. This is a brutal world, after all. Robin's life is much harder now she is free than when she was a slave gladiator. That's so interesting. That's such a... That's such a ah, I love that. That's really cool. Okay. Uh, Alice, the focus of this tale. A mage, magic is a thing in this alternative history setting, who is a Vestal Virgin. Now, Vestal and our virgins of Vesta are not allowed to leave the sanctuary in Rome, and any who have sex are, bur are, bur are buried alive. But we let her off with this, as she is super into her character. Fair play. This all sounds really cool to me. I'd love to play in this campaign. The problems begin, and I will keep this as short as I can, with Alice constantly ranting about the injustices of the Roman world, and how the entire world needs to be brought down so that it becomes more equal. She is pushing for things that would get us killed, and, in actuality, would just make life harder for any everybody, including most of the slaves. The DM gave her a bone by having us bring down a country noble who abused his slaves, showing the other side of the coin, so to speak. She loved this session, and developed quite an insufferable arrogance and holier-than-thou attitude with those around her. I figured that was her character, though. Irritating, but meh. Yeah, <coughs> uh, we've had one of these characters in... Have any of you seen uh, L.A. by Night, the uh, the Vampire the Masquerade RPG that's been going on? It's a very, very, very good um, series, and I do recommend watching it. But there is a character called Annabelle in that, and she is... I, I will say this now, if you find woke people very insufferable, maybe don't watch it, because there are, there are a few of them in there who like to push their agenda a little bit, but the rest of them are really funny and really dark and really push them over the edge, which is really, really cool. But Annabelle always gets her own way. She is treated as the main character of the story, even though she's not. She's the ultra, ultra, everybody should get along, everybody should have a place, everybody should be happy, there should be no slavery, no nothing, you know. I'm going to overturn 10,000 years of history because, you know, that's just what I want to do. Ra, ra, ra. I'm on the left, right? That, that kind of a person. And what's worse still, uh, Jason Carl, who is the DM, lets her get away with this. He is an amazing storyteller, but he indulges this person far too much. And so if you want to know how not to handle one of these players, go and watch that uh, RPG, those RPG sessions. 
because she becomes insufferable and she never suffers any consequences to her actions at all. And her actions get people killed all of the time. She always tries to do the greater good. She always tries to go beyond. And, and she's basically chaotic good, essentially. But even her being chaotic good gets people killed and she never suffers any consequences for it. And that's what th this character is reminding me, this Alice character, is reminding me a lot of Annabelle. And... When it, it got to the stage in later later sessions where if she was in the episode, I'll just skip it. I'll just skip the episode. Because it's going to be all about her and her struggles against injustices, quote-unquote. But anyway, later on, we are hired by slaves to kill the inciters of a slave revolt. You heard that right. The slaves hired us because they wanted to stay slaves where they will be fed, taken care of, and have a real chance of freedom after a certain period and land of their own because their master treated freedmen very, very well. Okay. Rebellious young slaves, however, are agitating for, for freedom now and are causing a lot of issues. Again, the DM is showing us both sides of the coin on the issue of slavery. As we are talking about our price for our services with our employer, Alice takes out a dagger and stabs our would-be employer in the throat causing a mass panic. She continues stabbing him, ranting about equality and, and whatnot until we restrain her. She then attempts to stab me and my character knocks her out before carrying her away from the now burning estate as slaves are fighting slaves everywhere. Yep, I wonder if she suffers any consequences. Let's see. When she wakes up, she casts Petrify on me, but Robin gets in the way. This, the spell and her failed res resistance check should have killed her instantly, and Alice knew this, but pressed ahead. The DM let her just fall unconscious, however. She threatens us with her spells and says if we ever try to aid those who are in league with slavery again, she will kill us all, and that we work for her now. She is still smirking like this when a spear is shoved through the back of her skull and out of the front of her mouth, knocking several teeth out in a gout of blood and killing her instantly. You see, Steve, the Sagittarius, had been passing pieces of paper to our DM with messages written on them, a common occurrence in our sessions, as he could control ravens to bring and send messages. He was kind of our fixer for certain jobs. On these messages, recently though, he had been telling the DM that he was sneaking up on Alice and passing constant sneaking checks as he did so. Alice was offered the chance by the DM to see if anything was amiss while she was giving her speech, but she brushed him off and continued ranting before getting her knife out to finish off Robin, who was lying prostrate on the floor, petrified. Alice was not amused. She slammed her hands down on the table and had no idea why we were pers persecuting her for being the good guy, quote-unquote, and that she couldn't believe we stood for slavery. She didn't really get that we didn't stand for it. This was a game set in the Roman Empire, and we had to deal with the good and bad that that brought. We are not the main characters of this world. We are just characters living in it. We ended the session there as it was a hell of a cliffhanger and Alice ended up apologising in the WhatsApp group to us, which was grand. She came back next session with, and I shit you not, the most evil slaver type of character I have ever seen. She did a complete U-turn. The girl learned her lesson. We almost killed this character too, such was her dastardly deeds. But my god, she was slippery. Cheers, dude, Norman. Well, at least somebody's like learned their lesson there. That's pretty cool. But at the same time, you know, don't be this person in the first place. Don't go into a setting thinking you're the main good guy character. It's cringe. It's horrible. You're going to ruin the fun for everybody else. And if you want to see how you, how you can ruin the fun for everybody else, go and check out Vampire the Masquerade, LA by Night, where in many sessions, people's time is wasted because one character is indulged over the others because they have some sort of everybody should be sniffing roses agenda, right? That a world is grey and can be horrible and we should explore that in the role-playing games, not run away from it. Anyway, thank you very much for watching. If you like what I do, head on down to the Patreon down below. Please, if you're the first, if you're here for the first time, subscribe to the channel. I'm only 25 people away from getting 8k subs. I would love to get there before the end of the weekend. I love you a long time. Have a wonderful weekend. Have a good one. I'll see you over the weekend. Perhaps we shall see. Have a good one.